All right, everybody, let's not wait another moment. Welcome back to another episode of Marvel Live. Uh, I don't think that I was with you guys on the last episode. Uh, I believe the same had to fill in for me as I was a little bit all over the place in uh, beautiful Minnesota. So it's been a while since I've seen everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, remember we stream live every first and third Tuesday of the month, 9 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash teamspooky. So thank you everybody for joining us. We will have a special guest this evening. He is not with us currently. Uh, we are gonna, he's, he's coming home from work. He's a working man. He did the work at the danger room, got home, got on his plane, came home, had to go to real work. So he's on his way home, but he's in the chat right now. If you wanna say hi to him, Mr. Not Enough Damage, Too Much Damage, Eddie Moo, whatever name you know him by, but he's hanging out with us in the chat while he is on his way home, so we'll see him later. But uh, we do have a pretty decent cast here with us tonight, some boys I haven't seen in a while. Unfortunately, Persia can't make it tonight, she is busy, so uh, it'll be just the boys holding it down this time, and uh, uh, Merkel as well is a little under the weather, so you won't be seeing him this evening. Just the boys! Just the boys! Just the boys! <laughs> just the boys in the house tonight, so I want to say first, uh, welcome uh, Seif, I haven't seen you in a grip, dude. How you doing, Seif? What's up, man? The kid is back. The kid, the kid is kid back. Is you look, you're looking good, man. Uh, you're in the new locale, right? You're back in Georgia? Back in Georgia. Got a beard on. Reverted back to my old self. Right. You know, Cali was a little too lit for a minute, so... <laughs> back to the old scratch and pull. Comfort. I respect that. Yeah, I'm already doing it. Look at me. It's crazy. <laughs> well, it's good to see you, man. And uh, welcome back, Potato Salad. It's good to see you, Marcus. Welcome back. The the kid is back, bearded, <laughs> the scratch and pull. Hey. <laughs> well, you look good, dude, and uh, I know you're sweating it out in the attic, but uh, thanks for joining us on the cast this evening. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Ray Bot. Good to see you, Jonas. How you doing, man? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a full beard yet, hey, but the kid the is here. The kid is back. <laughs> the brand is strong, and I'm here. You're looking good, man. Uh, it's a good enough beard for me. It's a good enough beard for the chat. So, And, of course, the kid is back. The beard is strong. I'm here at the old stroke of pool, so it's good to see you guys. Uh, we've got a tall show for us this evening. We had a lot of shit going on recently. Uh, Danger Room, nuts. Uh, combo Breaker about to be extra nuts. Uh, the Homecoming, I, ho I don't know if you guys have seen the video we've been running on Twitter, the little, little snippet there. Uh, Persia put together a nice little package of the players involved, and uh, I've been in the group chat with those guys for a little while, and you better believe it's starting to heat up, so I'm very excited for that. But uh, And again, we will have not enough damage on the cast later this evening. He is on his way home from work, so hang tight with us, and we'll, you'll get all you need to know about Mr. Eddie Moo later on in the cast. But first, I do want to start with recently announced 2nd Edition, Volume 2, Tape 2, whatever you want to call it, flip the script. Uh, the Homecoming, it's back. We told you it was coming. It, it was a huge success in NCR. You guys loved it. Uh, we we uh, reached out to Combo Breaker, and they were more than excited to have their own edition as well. So I'm going to throw the graphic up here on the stream. But uh, it's Team Midwest versus Team New York. And for those in the know and those who pay attention, you know that this already happened once. And uh, Midwest took the W. It was kind of, I don't want to say fraudulent, controversial. It was controversial. The W was... Uh, uh, a little ill-earned last-minute Virgil comeback from uh, uh, Joey D on, like, the ugliest drop I've ever seen from Ray Ray. I think uh, literally all he had to do was hit S, gravity squeeze, and the set was over. Drop the combo. Joey D runs it back with Virgil and delivers the ugliest pop-off I've ever seen in my life with the assist from iMash Button. So, shouts to you, Chris. Uh, so, yeah, this is the run back. This time, um, it's going to be Waseda style. They did do stock lifestyles. Uh, so, you know, that was like every person has like two lives or whatever, and you can keep playing through, but uh, none of that shit. We're going to have Waseda, so the matchup restarts every single time, but hopefully everybody will get to play everybody if it comes down to that. But it will be at Combo Breaker. We're still waiting on some final details, specifically what stream it's going to be on and what time it's going to be at, but it will be Saturday night. So Friday night, you will have the, um, the Marvel Auction, and then Saturday night, we will have the 3v3 Homecoming Volume 2. Uh, same rivalry, new rules. We got Team New York. You know them. Definitely you know them. Static, or sorry, Static Alpha on Team New York. Coach Steve, Flux, and Ray Ray, Team Captain Ray Ray, against uh, Team Midwest, defending their turf. Uh, Team Captain Dual Kevin, Joey D, and Static Alpha. So this is definitely going to be a sick 
six six set i actually pulled some pretty interesting some of these players were there at the danger room this weekend so i pulled some interesting stats from these guys but uh i want to hear from the cast before i get too far into it and i'll start with uh not not midwest but i'll say midwest affiliate that hand reaches out to you mr potato salad you you're you're close enough man i want you to know i, I want you to tell me a little bit how you feel about this this 3v3 matchup with Seda style this time it's not stock so there's you know there's not going to be any fraudulence how do you feel about this matchup and going into uh, Homecoming Volume 2? Well, I mean, first of all, do we know what the set count is going to be? Is it going to be like just one go through or is it going to be... first? Uh, it's going to be first of three. So they're going to play a complete set against each other. And when you when you, when you you lose, you're done. Okay, okay. Um, I don't know. I, I think it depends on how the matchups go. Because, I mean, like we saw last time, like, you catch somebody on the streak and then, like, yeah, it, it could be over, and like I think some of those matchups, like the um, I, I don't really remember the second set because I I remember there being a controversy on if it was going to be a single set versus a uh, two sets or something like that. Remember? Right. Yeah, we're yeah, giving them all the games this time. We're giving them all the games, <laughs> and uh, I, I think it just really depends on um, who who is feeling themselves that day, and I I think going in right now, I feel like Joey probably I think Ray and Joey have the most to prove. Honestly, yeah. I Make think up. Ray wants to. I think Ray wants to. I saw him posted on you know, yeah, Twitter, and he I I kind of he, he wanted to make up for his show showing at a uh, danger room. And I think Joey wants to just prove, continue to prove himself. Like I'm not saying that Joey hasn't proven himself already, but I think that he just wants to keep that momentum going and uh, hopefully keep it going towards Evo. Well, that's an excellent so, uh, point. That's a, that's a 100 percent point. I don't want to interrupt you, and I'll let you finish. But uh, Joey D, I'd say of all these players really is feeling himself and wants to put himself a cut above and you know another w like this would certainly do that uh who do you like in the set overall by the way you know like i i think last time i went with new york and i honestly like i feel like they can't go they're not going to go and being cocky this time they can't go and being cocky because they lost right. and like regardless <laughs> if it was the fluke or not they lost two like two sets to midwest so um i think <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I like you're under the gun dog the gun yeah, is I'm gonna up. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go Midwest, Midwest. Like, I, I yeah yeah like Kevin Kevin and Joey played ridiculous this past weekend and I know Brandon even or even Brandon wants to like prove himself I you know still like so I, I'm gonna go Midwest but yeah. I, I think it's gonna be a much more like close set than it was last time, if that's even possible, you know. Yeah, like, you're right. You're right. I think I think what I was talking to somebody else about this whenever I first like started kicking around, and I, I think maybe it was Prague or somebody. But like the way that I kind of see it is Team New York. They're right now. They're like they want to prove that they still got it, right? They want to still prove that they are still running the yard. But Midwest wants to prove that they're the fucking shit, you know. So and that's hard to fight yeah. with. Yeah, like, cause, yeah, like I think cocky New York was not a, not necessarily a good look because then it kind of played into the Midwest being the underdog and having everything to prove. But then on the flip side, like I don't think New York goes in with the underdog mentality. But I think a cocky Midwest, like Brandon and Joey being like super, you know, just raunchy Midwest players that they are, like I think it could be a like. They could be a problem, and then Kevin just like the silent assassin, and just you know right. being the backbone to the team. I, it's, a, it's a really strong team, so it's a it's a good order no matter the way how you break it. Uh, I see Bruce Leroy in the chat saying, "Fuck that New York all day." I respect that New York is definitely. I would say they're probably still the favorites, uh, even with the caliber of Dual Kevin and Static and Joey. Even that, they them elevating themselves so far. Uh, but anybody else, by the way, if you wanna. Feel free to share your opinions in the chat. I'll read it out. I don't care. We definitely want to hear from you guys. I want to see what you think. Who's going to take this set? Uh, just some just some quick things to note. Static did eliminate Ray Ray from Danger Room, correct? So that's yeah. that's and they have a, a growing rivalry in general. And I think of the people that I saw playing the most sets this weekend. Uh, Kevin and Ray Ray were grinding uh, at the Danger Room. They were just sitting side by side and grinding, grinding, grinding. They were playing tons of sets, especially during the AMAs on Sunday. Uh, they were going at it super hard. Obviously, you have the two zeros, so it's, it's very interesting. You have, you know, Flox, who's proven. Uh, yeah, it was 3-1. Thank you, Airborne. Shout out to Airborne in the chat. Uh, by the way, Airborne did a great breakdown of the uh, Not Enough Damage and uh, Joey D set on Twitter, so please go check that out at our Marvel Lives account. But anyways, 
Uh, yeah, so the two zeros, and then you have Dual Kevin and Coach, which I feel like they kind of serve as like the rocks, you know, of the team. Like they're both the solid dudes, you know, so they, they kind of pick it up. Uh, Marcus, you went with Midwest. Before I before I ask either of you boys specifically, uh, Seif and Jonas, do either of you like Team New York? No. No. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put money on it. Okay, you wouldn't put money on it. Does that mean that you you don't like New York though? Or you just you just don't feel like you would be good enough to put money on it? I I, I want New York to win, but I don't think they're gonna win. Persia's you know? not like... here, so someone has to step <laughs> up. So okay, tell me you want them to win. Tell me tell me about uh, what you what you want them to do and what you think is gonna happen, Jonas. I want them to play well, but Ray didn't do so well in Danger Room. Like he lost to Joey in the first to five, and he lost to Static in the tournament. And Ray Ray is the best player on Team New York, undisputed. And he like he lost to Kevin too. Yeah, he did. He lost to Kevin. Kevin too. Yeah, he did. I don't no, know. I... Wait, no. In, in in the round robin phase, he did beat Kevin though. That was that was really close. Oh, he beat him just barely. What? So I thought I thought Chris. No, no, actually. He beat him by the first fives raised. Yeah, Ray beat him. Okay, okay, my barely, bad, my bad. Barely. Go ahead, Jonas. Go ahead. See, that changes things, you know. That changes the dynamic. But I still like. Joey got second in this high caliber tournament, and Dual Kevin is all around solid. And Static Alpha already proved that he can beat like anyone. Like he beat Ray Ray. So I think Midwest is gonna win. But I would love to see New York like prove me wrong and win because I like those guys. You're right. I think. I mean, obviously, we definitely want it to be a set, and we're glad that Combo Breaker's hosting the, the, you know, the second homecoming. But uh, I don't. I mean, I don't want it to be free. Uh, Airborne brings up another point. You know, Ray Ray was pretty poor in the first of three, so I hope he's taking it seriously. He's got a couple weeks to grind this out, and uh, team order is going to matter. Like the the purpose of yeah. this, this, uh, you know, I don't know how to say it. This 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 team format kind of exhibition, this homecoming series that we're running, is we want people to be strategic about who they put in first. Who goes in the middle? Who's going to be the closer? Like, we want people to actually think about this. We want it to be really important. So I do believe that the team order for New York especially means a lot right now. Uh, shout out to Jay Bars who says, I like New York, but I have to admit, Dual Kevin's a damn problem. Dude, absolutely. Dual Kevin is definitely one of the X factors here. Last guy we haven't heard from yet, Seif. I want to hear your opinions on this uh, 3v3 set. Who do you think is going to take it? What do you want to see from both teams, man? Yeah, uh, you're right about how the players are going to really match up. Because to me, I feel like uh, early on in one of the terms, I forget which one, Coach has actually beaten Kevin before. And, yeah, he did. He did. Flu and Flux has a pretty good matchup against Kevin as well. Granted, like it's just depending on how ridiculous you know dual Kevin plays when it comes to zero. But I feel like there is a lot of back and forth. I think the big problem you know everybody has is not even Kevin or Static. It's really Joey and yeah. the team. Yeah. Okay, and it's not to, and you know, uh, going back to like what you you all talk about with Danger Room, you know, Joey may be feeling himself, but he also comes from like a little bit of humbleness and like a little bit of realness when it comes to like how he sees himself in comparison to everybody. Like, I think someone in like an AMA or something asked him, like, "Do you think you are the best in Midwest, or you do you think you're the best player?" And he said, "No, I'm definitely not the best player. Kevin's a better player than me, but my team allows me to not have to be the better player to win." Yeah, you're right. So, That's actually a great point. Yeah. So in he in out of all the teams, I feel like he is probably the scariest anchor. He's like the only one playing anchor Virgil, right? Like Flux plays him second, and he has pro he has by far the scariest incoming out of any zero playing right now, and people so just can't really stop him when he gets a hit. So like. You know, it all it all really comes to like if New York can contain Joey D from just like going off. I really think from there, like New York can really pick around Dual Kevin and Static. You know, I, I don't think I've ever seen Coach play Static or anything, but that could be something where you know Coach really comes out and does mad work against him and Kevin. So I really like, as you said, you know, P, uh, Dual Kevin and Coach being the two players in the back that are really there to kind of stabilize each team. And I expect coach to have to put a lot of work on his hands to make things happen. Cause Ray Ray didn't look that hot in, in, you know, at danger room and dual Kevin and, and Joey D seem like the hungriest players there. And I don't yeah. think that hunger is going to subside at all. No, so, I completely agree, yeah. dude. Like as far as like who wants this the most, I definitely think it's probably Midwest. You know, they're still out to prove themselves in a big way. Uh, shout out to Aeonian who just joined us in the chat. 
And uh, yeah, uh, Phil Tastic, uh, Phil Profet, he said that it was at NEC where Coach beat uh, Dual Kevin to get in the top eight. So absolutely, I mean, it's 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 been done. It can't be done again. Jonas, you better quit slapping your damn keyboard if I slap you upside your damn face. All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been done before. It's not like Dual Kevin's untouchable, but the the I got to agree with you guys. You keep coming back to jo Joey D and his his level of play and his intensity and his ability to snowball. Like I talked to Joey D at length about, you know, not only in the AMA, uh, but just across the weekend about how he sees himself as a player, his value and especially his team. Uh, Virgil 84, your name is hilarious, dude, but he says it's like Team Scrub. It's like the new Team Scrub. I mean, kind of like you, once you just like get behind it, it's so hard to play from behind against Joey. He's gonna strangle you. He's like he's gonna oppress you with his resources and his incomings, especially just like you mentioned, Steve. So uh, I don't know. Like who who does anybody match up well against Joey on Team New York? Uh, I think Coach Steve. You think so? Ray on a good day. Ray on a good day. Okay, we got Coach Steve and got Ray on a good day. I want to hear from uh, from you, Jonas. Why does Coach Steve match up well against Joey? Do you think? I think like Coach Steve has that play style that's pretty good against that type of player because he used to regularly beat Flux on the regular. Yeah. Because the, what he usually does, he wins the point war and he just like stream rolls you with Spencer. So they both have like a sort of similar game plan, you know, like just win, just beat the first person and just like set play the rest of the team, right? But coach has had the most like experience against zero because he plays and he's trained so much against flux so i think coach steve like he can pretty much be um joey d if he's on point and not playing justice okay okay and uh by the way injustice is six so that's a very real possibility uh don't justice don't kill me for saying that don't kill me for saying that see if you said ray on a good day what makes ray on a good day be able to beat zero missiles i mean it's still, you know, like, it, what, what do you think gives him the edge if, if he brings his best game? Uh, particularly, I feel like Ray, when he's, like, really on point with his decision-making, he's, like, and even Joey D has mentioned this before, that he has the best understanding of, like, assist calling and counter-assist calling. Yes. And that's where I feel like Joey has been consistently very smart about his missile calling. Like, incredible, I think, incredible. you know, uh... Going back to Airborne's analysis on Twitter, I read that, and good stuff. You really pointed out all the adaptation, like, back and forth between multiple sets between them. That, like, Joey D is pretty cognizant of, like, the little mind games that he needs to play in order for him to either get missiles out or punish the person for playing, you know, trying to hit the missiles. And usually if Ray Ray on a good day is able to outplay you in that situation, and then he gets you to block drones and whatnot... I don't foresee, you know, Joey D being able to block out and play neutral against him once Zero's dead. Like, Zero needs to OCB or else it's just like... Or Anchor Virgil, sorry. <laughs> Anchor Virgil's always a problem with Joey. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. And uh, it's it was shown. Like, there were some times where Joey was put on the back foot and he, like, you know, he took a punch he didn't expect to and he had to tilt a little bit. So, I mean, it's possible with a guy like Ray's quickness, his precision, you're right. If he brings those to the table, if he can bring that kind of Ray Ray that, you know... We called would be the Evo champion after he won, you know, uh, what was it, Winter Brawl and Naptown Clutch back to back. That was that was impressive, Ray. That was like peak Ray. And if he can bring that, I don't know where he's got to dig deep from to find it. But you know, he was in his feelings a little bit on Twitter and on Facebook, so maybe he's searching. And I hope he is. But yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's very 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 possible. Uh, shout out to and, Hayes Pikachu, by the way, in the chat. Good to see you, man. What are you about to say? And real talk, like. We're bringing the focus on Joey D, right? But at the same time, like, can we talk about how ridiculous Dual Kevin is? Yeah, like, this absolutely. is the hungriest I've seen this kid. And this dude played the most optimal Marvel I've seen him play yet. It was, like, soul-crushing. And his set against Chris G was probably, like, the smartest way to play against Chris I've seen in, like, a really, really, really long time. Like, that, he could easily, like, OCV if he's, like, on his stuff and, like, everybody else in New York doesn't come to bring it. Like, I don't know. Like, as far when it comes to the hunger, like, Midwest really has it and it shows in their game. Like, New York's got to, like, really dig deep. Yeah. Uh, Dual Kevin is, is – he was my pick for the overall Sunday winner. And Chris gave him the props on Twitter. He was like, Dual Kevin is too good for this king. Like, he, he, yeah. he gives all the props in the world to Kevin. Plays an unbelievably fair team. Wins on, you know, precision, precision meter management, resource management, X-factor management, decision-making, game, game plan. He's prepared, you know, he's trained himself to look 
for all the perfect answers and all the you know unpredictable situations. So, uh, but I want to you know I don't want to leave Static Alpha out of this conversation because we mostly you know centered the convo around Kevin and Joey, but Static is a guy who's kind of like Ray. If he shows up and he's peak Static Alpha, he could do so much work so fast. And he ended up going one and six for the weekend in round robins uh, at Danger Room, but. Those sets, for the most part, he got bought, he got washed by Angelic. But all the other sets, he went five four with Dual Kevin for the first match of the weekend, and he he brought that intensity to everybody. So I, I think Static Alpha is another you know slept on you know card in 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 the deck that Midwest is bringing yeah. here. It's a trinity for a reason, right? They're all three really sick players, and uh, I haven't voted yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and say now, I'm confident Midwest will protect the turf. I'm confident that Midwest will take the homecoming at combo breaker and if they don't then maybe we have a third set that we got to plan out somewhere here Evo is right around <laughs> the corner so i think we win win either way that's the that's the way that i kind of see it so i'm excited i'm uh, shout out to combo breaker uh for letting us have or letting us come and letting us set this up giving this the exhibition space and the production time it's, it's gonna be real guys we're gonna have a prime time stream i i wish i could tell you the names of the streamers that are up in the air right now because they'll be really surprised but they're fantastic uh, but I, I unfortunately can't give you those details yet because they're still to come. But uh, we're gonna have the main stage. It's it's gonna be beautiful. You guys are gonna love it. And uh, that's that's one of two Marvel exhibitions this weekend. So or not this weekend, but Combo Breaker weekend. So Marvel definitely lives at Combo Breaker, and I, I'm very stoked. Um, I, I do think Midwest will end up taking it. So anybody else wanna wanna drop some some knowledge on this three v three real quick because uh, I do want to take. Some some plenty of time for Combo Breaker. It's one of our premier events, and uh, if it, yeah, yeah, everybody cool, all right? Because I'm ready to talk. By the way, Eddie, I see you in the chat, worried about the traffic, dude. We rearranged the show for you, man. We put Danger Room at the back so you could take all the time you need, drive safe. Eddie Moo will be here live in full effect, guys. Just hang on, he'll be here. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about Combo Breaker. Uh, the first thing I want to say about Combo Breaker: 135 pre reg. Is what that, dude? Is that the, the biggest? Is that the hell. biggest this year so far? Three, Not the three, biggest this three. year, yeah. Because I know final round pushed close to like one twenty four. I think it was at pre reg, or uh, maybe that was even after the doors closed. No, uh, I think I think yeah. I it think, was a hundred, and I think it got bumped up to one hundred and twenty. Yeah, man. It, five. It, it was uh, yeah. that's right. It was one hundred and twenty five, and we were really excited to have a hundred man bracket again. You know, at a major tournament, but one hundred and thirty freaking five guys. Pre-reg is closed. You know Marvel players drag their freaking feet to everything. So when that door reg is going live, there's going to be more nerds lining up to make this happen. So I, I'm very stoked for Combat Breaker, and I'm seeding the pools right now. Again, I can't divulge this information to you, but the names that are in these in these brackets right now, or waiting to be put in these brackets, are pretty crazy. There are some regions of the United States coming out to this event that I thought were corpses. I thought these players were done, wrapped, not interested, whatever. I don't know if they're coming for injustice or if they're coming just because they want to dig up old bones or they want to make something happen in the last year of Marvel. That's kind of the theme, but you better believe Combo Breaker is showing up in a big way. But real quick, nuts and bolts. Uh, the, the event itself will be May 26th through the 28th. So that's Memorial Day weekend. It's not this weekend. It's the following weekend. Uh, this is in uh, St. Charles, I believe. Was it? Uh, I don't remember exactly. that. Yeah, St. Charles, Illinois. Uh, it says it says Illinois USNA, but uh, it's at the Mega Center in St. Charles, Illinois. It's a 24/7 venue. If you still have a way to come out to Combo Breaker, pre-registration is closed. Door registration will be active. Spectators are free, guys. Spectators are free. Bring your girlfriend, bring your mom, your dog, your grandma, your best bud. I don't care who it is. You can come and watch and enjoy the FTC. Participate, watch for free. That's a big deal. I'm registering me and my girlfriend at Evo this year. Just to spectate, it's 150 bucks. You can bring your buddies for free to Combo Breaker. That's 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 very uncommon. And this is an S tier curly event, guys. What's Yo, can, can I just can just drop in real quick and, and say yeah. that Combo Breaker 2016 had 73. 73. Entrance. 73. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And now we have 135. So Holy crap! Holy crap! So we basically, you know, doubled. Basically doubled. Basically mm. doubled. You know, we're getting pretty close to double. We're getting close. We're getting close. Maybe after late, Rich. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident, you know, that after, you know, people people are showing up to the doors, I'm fairly confident. I'm fairly confident that we can break 150. But most importantly, 
this is an S tier curly event, guys. This is this is pre primo cream of the crop. This is premier in every definition of the word for our circuit, and I'm excited. Is anybody else coming to Comma Breaker here on this call? I don't think you are, right? Uh, I wish I, I could. I, know, I Jonas, wish. I know Jonas, man. I know you're holding that L, but uh, yeah, man. We've 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 really we've really pushed a lot in Comma Breaker. Again, there's the two two pre or two exhibitions. So if you've ever if you're not familiar with the uh, the the Marvel auction. They traditionally either pull teams out of a hat, random select characters, and and make teams. Or there's all they they pre-design them sometimes with funny names like Team Zip was like Zero, uh, Spencer, Spider-Man. Team Missiles was like Wesker, Doom, Nemesis. You know they do funny little things like that, and you have to bid on them. So the highest bidder, you know, fifty dollars, sixty dollars, seventy dollars, it's gone up to like hundred ten dollars as much at some points. Uh, that's the winner of that of that uh, that team, you know. So there will be an auction event Friday night, and I know this hurts some people, but you hey, you click the checkbox whenever you sign up for the damn tournament. Pools start on Friday, guys. Dual Kevin might miss pools. He's not going to get there. He's he's not going to get there till like 9 p.m. Friday night. <laughs> so this tournament, this is his major in his backyard, and he might not play. So. That stings. That stings, but no exceptions. Rick is very upfront about it. He says, hey, no exceptions. I can't give anybody preferential treatment. You roll the dice just like everybody else. Pack your favorite dice. You know, do your best you can, but dual Kevin might not make it to pools. But Warriors mentality, I talked to him about it. He said, hey, I'm going all in for this exhibition. He's like, you better believe if I can't make it to pools, I'm training my hardest to, to put New York away in a big way. So I don't know if that means he's going to go first. He's just going to try to do it all himself. But, uh, Jonas, did you go to Combo Breaker last year? No, uh, you guys was like way too far away. Did anybody make it to Combo Breaker last year? Has anyone made it to Combo Breaker ever? Ah, uh, man. Ah, so, uh, well, there's like 1,700 people registered this year. It's on my bucket list, I swear. Man, I swear it it's on my bucket list. Keep it there, because you know Infinite's going to be, uh, be there I know. in a big way. So. I know. Last year, the stage, it was like... I saw pictures, I was like, yo, I need to go. And now this year I was like, yo, I need to go. But they sold oh out three God. they sold out three hotels. Three what? hotels. They sold out the, the mega resort venue. They sold out the, the turn or the hotel immediately across the street and they sold out the one down the road. So I had to go to the fourth hotel to get my room. But uh uh no, Ryan L V is not currently signed up for Combo Breaker. That does does that mean that he will not be going? I'm not gonna say. But he's not currently pre-reg for Comic Breaker. So uh, that, that's really interesting, actually. We haven't, Ryan LV has kind of slept on the radar. Uh, Joey D in the chat telling every, how exactly how he feels about Team New York right now. Shout out to Joey D, man. It was good hanging out with you this weekend. But uh, I, I want to I ask you guys something. So we're on Combo Breaker. This is the biggest Marvel tournament of the year so far. CEOs around the bin. You know it's going to be huge. Uh, Florida is coming out. For uh, for combo breaker this year, Marvello, Tom. Was those the corpses you were Marvello? talking about? Pro, what? Marvello, yeah, was these the corpses I'm talking about? Yeah, dude, I ain't seen Michael in a minute. Marvello <gasps> is, is in the Marvel bracket. Uh, Prophet, you're in the Marvel bracket. Tong's in the Marvel bracket. Rafi, Rafi's coming to combo breaker. Uh, there's a, there's a whole Asian bunch Demon? of Asian Demon. Man? No, I did not see Asian Demon. Doctor Salt. I, I did not see Tampa. I'll say that. Okay. Well, I I, I um I was besides just wondering. Tom, I, besides Tom. I watched. Uh, I think it was like two or three weekends ago. I watched their major or not their major, one of their monthlies. And uh, Mar Marvella was playing in it, and so was Tong and uh, Green Ace. Not Green. Yeah, Green Ace was there, yeah. and um, freaking Asian Demon and Mini Boss. Now it's Grand Finals, so I they still play. <laughs> they just don't play out of state. So I'm glad they're traveling, and I guess they're prepping for CEO. So that's good. To, that's good to hear. Okay, and uh, Phil updates me in the chat. It says out not. It says Alan nor Ron, Ronan are going, so they won't be there. Uh, Marvel is going for Street Fighter Five, I assume. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. He's been grinding Street Fighter pretty hard. He's tweeting about it all the time, playing it. But hey, he's in the building. But so he he's got in the he got no 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 no. He got top eight at Citrus Clash, which is the Florida monthly. Oh, and, and uh, uh, in Street Fighter uh, or from Marvel? From Marvel? From Marvel. Oh, okay, Marvel, yeah. he's still playing the same garbage. He's playing the same team. He's still playing. Like, he's playing. What, what else do you want? 
Okay, okay, you're right, yeah. I mean, I'm glad to see him. I haven't actually physically seen the dude in, like, a long-ass time, so I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to cut up. I can't wait to hang out. Uh, Marlin Pie in the bracket as well. Always fun. Uh, there's, there's some other names that I can't divulge, but uh, uh, Unknown will be there. Spill some teams. Spill Unknown. the teams. <laughs> I can't. Just I name the I, team. We don't have name the player. <laughs> I wish I could tell you everything. I wish I could tell you everything, but um, uh, Marlin Pie will be there. Unknown will be there. So we'll have three, probably, I would say, the three best Vipers uh, running the country right now. This full schedule's on full dad life right now. Uh, and Static in uh in marlin pie and in jahi k brad uh justin wong some other names to throw in the hat there uh no other guys i think chris is going of course but uh champs not in the bracket he's not going to combo breaker he doesn't need that premiere status so uh, uh any of the uh, seattle guys what's that seattle any of the seattle guys uh yes jibril and kyle p will be in attendance at combo breaker this year uh, basically, name a region of the United States. Jeopardy's coming from California. Uh, I don't know if Cole's going or not. Anybody from Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Moo is going. Not enough damage will be there. Uh, our guest for later this evening, assuming he survives the traffic and makes it home. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a who's who and a where's where of players coming out to this event. So we're not just joking when we say, you know, this is a premier curly tournament. This is... Currently, the premier Curly Circuit Tournament. It's going to have the most stacked competition. Uh, you know, it's missing some names like Cane Blue River won't be there, but you know, he's living his life, doing his humble life out there, being humble right now. In Chile. In Chile, humble in Chile. Shouts to uh, Wolf for the humble off last or this weekend. But uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty big deal. So uh, I, I want to ask you guys real quick across the table: biggest Marvel tournament of the year. Chris G is going to be there. Ray Ray is going to be there. The, the who's who's going to be there. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's Is that real? RF and Nemo are going. I knew that they're going. Huh? I knew Japan was going for Street Fighter. Yo, I, they, I wouldn't believe I wouldn't believe this, this shot. Like, I don't know. Okay, no. I know they're, I know they're going to be there. Because I talked to. Nah, nah. I don't, I don't believe that. Who's Jay yo, yo. I've never seen this guy before K- in my life. Hey. KP, KP. You're, yo, yeah. He said, I wish. KP, you're the only one that can actually see the bracket. Hey, J- Japan is. Like, you, will be, you should be. Oh, damn. Be hey, I told you. you I, I told you there's some names I can't tell you about. So I'm just letting you know. Mm. I'm just letting you know uh, that there's a very interesting international presence this year at Combo Breaker. So please be excited. Uh. Dead seed, Zach Bennett, let's go. All right, next question. <laughs> Zach Bennett. White know. black, let's go. Yeah, but, uh, Ant-Man. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> best of all, oh my God. <laughs> yes, I would be so excited. Ramasama will be there. Speaking of which, good homies with Mr. Ant-Man. Somehow he's going to make top eight. Somehow he's going to make top eight. You know he always, I mean, well, he always does that shit. Especially in the most tournament. like random tournaments, too, where you wouldn't expect him. He just comes out and bops everybody. Oh, yeah. And before the tournament, he's like, well, you know, I haven't been playing for a while. No, I got my machine. You know what I mean? Uh, I'd like and to see then, if Jason Kido's going. You know, he's also sick. So, oh my God, yes. The brothers. I'd like to see the brothers represent. But uh, yeah, man, there's a. I just want you guys to stay excited about Combo Breaker. There's so many reasons to be excited about Combo Breaker Marvel this year. The registration numbers, uh, the exhibitions, the homecoming. Who's gonna be there? Uh, you know, it's 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 a good look. I hope Dual Kevin doesn't get. DQ'd in pools, that'd be an insane blow up for his backyard tournament and you know, basically his major. Uh, man, Green Ace ain't gonna face nobody. Stop with that. I don't even know. I don't you know, I'm just gonna put it on the screen just because. Green Ace, you automatically already copping out, dude. Uh, we definitely won't see Green Ace anywhere. Certainly not a combo breaker, so you can just go ahead and let that dream slip. But uh yeah. Uh it's 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 real guys. It's real. Um I don't have a whole lot else to say about combo breaker because obviously the tournament hasn't happened. Other than that, it will be the first thing that we talk about when we come back in the first Tuesday of June. So uh, if you if you want to stay in touch with the results, with uh, who beat who, uh, I, I do want to ask something real quick, though. I, I started on this question before I got sorry track. Does anybody have a favorite for the tournament? Let's assume Duel Kevin makes it. He's in his backyard. Chris is there. They're all there. I'm going to pick Duel Kevin. I'm going to stick with my guns. If he makes it into the pools, if he makes it into the bracket... I'm going to pick Duel Kevin. I'm going to say that Duel Kevin has been so impressed. I know he wants his W so bad. He has no wins this year. He has no tournament wins this year. Not yet. 
He did win Frosties. Ryan Ovi was there. He didn't win, you know, Nat Town. He didn't win any of the usual tournaments he does well at. Jonas, do you have a favorite, man? Do you have a favorite? Anybody that you want to see? Uh, I Heart Justice or anything like that? Anybody you want to see take the bracket? E-G-N-Y Chris G. You want to see win. him do it? You want to see him do it? Nah, nah, I don't want to see him do it, no. Okay, he, but do you think nah. he's going to do it? I mean, he's he going to do it. He's he going to every win. tournament at, at Danger Room, man. He wins everything. He is the John Cena of Marvel. I'm sick of it. <laughs> he wins everything. He's the John um, Cena of... Nobody likes Joey? You don't like nah, Joey? Nah, Joey's not going to win. Nah. Okay. He's not going to win. Nah. Okay. If I like anyone, like, who I would love to see, like, play and win, um, hmm. If I had the full list, I would tell you. I know. I... You know? I know? If I had the full list, I would tell you. But, but if you anyone, know. um... Chris G's a fair guess, man. I mean, that's uh, as far as safe bets go, you can't get any better of a bet than Chris G. Uh, Marcus, what about you, man? Anybody that you're you're riding your hopes on? Any Southeast boys? Any Bluegrass boys? Anybody that you think, man, this is just going to be the one that go pull it out, upset everybody? Combo I mean, victory? shoot, before he gets here, I'd like to see Eddie do well. Uh, he yeah. did really well. He did really well against Chris in uh, the single tournament. Like, he, 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 you know, switched it up and was playing missiles and stuff like that. But... Let's be real. Jonas is right. Chris G. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet money, but, like, he's, like, the only – he's, like, the safest pick, you know? Like, who's who's going to beat Chris G? Like, uh, Ryan's not going to be there. Um, he might. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I was going to ask, is Terry going to be there? Who? Oh, no, I did not see Terry in the pre-reg list, so I don't, I don't think so. No, Cosmos is not pre-reg either. All right, then, yeah, I'm going Chris. And I'm not saying because Cosmos could be Chris, but, like, that would be a sick match to watch, like, you know, another showdown between those two. But let's be real, Chris G, I mean, <laughs> he wins everything. Chris G's going to win, guys. Like, let's pack it up. <laughs> okay, look. Marvel not... Live is canceled for next month. I'm not, saying... I'm not saying you're wrong, man. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I think I feel like Chris is undisputed, right? He's hit undisputed levels. He's Yo, like, how, you can't. How sick him. would it be? How sick would it be if he didn't win, though? Yeah, yeah, I know, right? I mean, what if Justin Wong wins? He's not gonna win. I know it's so hard. It's so hard to say that Justin's gonna win, right? But what if? What does it do for the conversation going into Evo? Like, let's just think about it for a second. It's been so long since all these heads have been in the bracket, you know, at the same time. And it's been a real bracket with, like, real tension and real players, real pools. What if Justin wins? I mean, what if I feel like I feel like Justin, like, this is the thing. Usually he signs up, but he doesn't actually get to play because there's always some kind of, like, his pools are during Street Fighter Top 32 or something. Yeah. So he's like, yo, I need to, I need to, like, focus on the money you know like i'm sorry to say crudely but if for some reason he goes like he doesn't make it out of pools in, in street fighter he's gonna go in so hard at marvel like he could do it i know but, right he could power up yeah. right he could have an it's like, moment yo know, like it's it's like when when he got when he like there was one evo that he did not make sunday finals for any game i think it was 2015 he did not like the ukbr one right yeah you're absolutely right he did not true. he did not get top eight in any in anything right so the year after that he got like he got eliminated out of street fighter and, for, and somehow he said yo i need to make top eight and he made top eight he beat jabril and got top eight at marvel right last year yeah so if that, that same thing could happen here he could power up, man. He could be an anime power up. But hey, I, I just want to ask a quick question. Is he the only Street Fighter player that you apply that rule to? Where if yeah. he didn't make it up? So you don't think, like, K-Brad could do something no, similar? No, it's or just Chris? It's just no. Really? No. Okay, I'm just wondering. Chris I'm just wondering. is going to make top eight regardless. In I, no, no I'm, I'm just wondering if, like, if you apply that rule, too. It's like, yo, I got knocked out of this other game. F it, I'm about to go all in. <laughs> I think that's only for, like, the only person that I've seen actually pull that out, like, more than once is Justin Wong, you know? You're right. And he's so I think that's him. crazy. I, like, Chris G, like, granted, he enters everything, but I've literally seen him, like, DQ himself from a tournament so that, that way he could focus on Marvel. Or, you know, like, I've literally seen him say, yo, I'm not playing my KOF matches, DQ me. I'm over here. You know? I, I do oh, like that happens, yeah. Yeah, I do like that we have uh this level of Chris G that's kind of like um 
He's like, he's like trying to just put a stamp on it, you know? He's just trying to put a damn stamp on it. He's like, all the, all the bitching I've done all year long, all the smack that everybody's talked, you know, all that, <laughs> all that, all of that, man, it's just, don't forget. And I'm still out here. And I'm still exactly, with the right? Yeah, he's I still hate, you know, like I still hate BS4 yeah. version. Yeah, man. So I like, saw his AMA at Danger Room, and he was like surprisingly like mature about it. Like, I know I've been complaining, but I'm also practicing infinite in the corner. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> so it's not all. I, I'm just not went, talking. Yeah, he went for a Morgan. He, he went. He went for a Morgan Infinite in one match, and that's like one of the first times I've ever seen him like go for it, and he pulled it off too. Man, and like it's like I, I'm glad to see. I don't know if his sponsor like pulled him inside and say, "Hey, this is EG. You don't do that, dog," or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I'm glad to see he's like picking it up, man. Like, yeah, exactly. I think it's more like I, I, I've noticed a change of um, attitude after he beat Ryan last time they played. Like, he's been way more positive about things. I think it was just emo about losing so much. But now that he's, like, back on it, maybe that's it. Yeah, I think I mean, right. I don't I even know if right. it's necessarily emo, because, like, he did really well both matches against Ryan at final rounds, you know? And, like, <clears throat> he's, like, always been in it, and, like, he's clearly had issues adapting, just like everybody else has had adapting, and it may have taken him a little bit longer and everything, but, like... He could have easily have said, like, yo, I'm just working through some stuff versus having the attitude that he's had in the past. But I am with you. I'm, I'm super glad that he is being way more positive about everything and actually winning. And it's like almost like once he had to prove to everybody that, like, yo, I'm still the best. Don't forget about me. Like, I like seeing Chris G with, like, a chip on his shoulder and trying to shut everybody up. Like, that's the Chris G that's going to win Evo. Yeah, I'm trying to invent, like, you know, Chris G obviously is the favorite probably to win the bracket, but I'm trying to imagine this top eight, man. And you want to talk about some of the underrated champions. Like, Jabril, dude, that dude, he comes to play. And, like, whenever – if there's if there's anybody who could beat Chris, it's just a zero player. Like, let's just be straight up. So, I don't know, man. Like, and, and I see uh, I see Captain Manu in the chat. He says, what about Coach Steve? Like, Coach Steve can, like, show up in a big way, and he makes top eight and, you know – I don't know how much he's practicing. I don't know how much him and Ray Ray are taking this seriously right now. They seem like they're a little bit in their feelings, but you're right, Jonas. Injustice 2 just dropped, and we know that that coach loves to dip, dip and dabble, so I just don't know about it, guys. Combo Breaker, there's a lot of question marks, but I think the one certainty, one certainty we know is that Chris G, not only will he get top eight, it's pretty hard to argue against him um, not taking the The one game. person we shouldn't sleep on is Ray, because he's the only person that's like, Probably besides Ryan, that's like really give Chris a run for his money in their tournament matches too. And Kevin and Kevin, Ray and Kevin. But we don't even know if Kevin's gonna make it to pools. That's man. why I said Ray. That's why I said Ray. It's like I think Ray definitely wants to. He definitely wants to, you know, forget about this past weekend. So I definitely foresee him doing really well at Combo Breaker and kind of just shaking off anything mentally that he had going on and playing really well. Yeah, I mean, J-Bars, dude, you're in the chat saying, how in the hell is Christy this good? He doesn't practice, bro. I ran a first of 15 with him at the Danger Room offset, and I think he ended up beating me like 15 or 3. And uh, he hit me. Yo, you won 3, though. I won 3, though, Chris. I don't care if you were playing Magneto, bro. He definitely he definitely infinite me with Morgan like 6 or 7 times. So, I mean, it's getting pretty crispy. And he only dropped like a couple of them. So his, his percentage was like 6 out of 8. And that, that's pretty scary if Chris G adds the Morgan Infinite to his game. So I'm definitely ready for him. Uh, but anything else on Combo Breaker, guys? I know we got Eddie Moose sliding in here. He's getting set. Um, I want to get him in, but I also have some shout-outs that I like to do in the in-between if, uh, if everybody's good with Combo Breaker. I'm good. I'd like to start with Spring Scuffle because I've been talking hella Spring Scuffle for like a month straight now, and it's finally happening this weekend. If you can get there. I don't know how you're going to get there last minute. I don't know how you're going to get there without having planned for this because it's in Bozeman, Montana, guys. It's in Bo Bozeman, Montana. You probably don't know where that is. I didn't know where it is until I moved to Minnesota. But if you can find a way to get there, come see me. Come see me in Bozeman, Montana. It's a $300 pop bonus. It's a one-day tournament. I know if you want to come get paid, that pop bonus might go up the day of, to be honest. If you want to get paid, come out and see me because if you don't, 
It's just going to be me and Montana scrapping it out for a big chunk of cheese and a one day in tournament. So shout out to Spring Scuffle. Uh, that is this Saturday. This Saturday. It's finally happening. Bozeman, Montana sounds like a, a joke character in a sitcom. Sure. Sure it does. They're all jokes. I'm going to go out and make jokers of all of them. You hear me, Bozeman, Montana? You better well, we'll wake up. Oh, you're right. I, I shouldn't say that. In fact, I'm, I'm probably <laughs> going to get blown up by Nemesis. If we're being 100% straight, I have a losing record against Nemesis. So, But anyway, shouts to, shouts to Bozeman, Montana. And I, I don't have a slide for this one, but I do want to let them know that uh, uh, there is a tournament coming up in San Diego, California. Marvel tournament in San Diego, guys. This hasn't happened in a grip. This is, this is Revival in full effect. Uh, it's the uh, Hyper Bomb Stage 2. It's going to be June 10th and June 11th. We don't have a, a graphic for you this time, but we do have another show in June, and you better believe I'll have it for you then. But I will have a Facebook link. I'll put it in the description of the video. If you're in the San Diego area, if you're in the Cali area, you're looking for more competition, uh, you've got to make it happen. This, this, this Yo, is it. What's up? You guys, you guys remember the sick... San Diego FTC streams that they used to do back then with this guy. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Man. Those were awesome. Dude, Those it's, were awesome. It's been a while. And if you guys haven't recognized that voice, our guest is, is joining us now. So uh, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Mr. Eddie Moo. Uh, not enough damage, too much damage, whatever name you're even going by these days. Dude, you look great. You look. You thank you, thank you. He yeah. always looks good. Doesn't he? It's, it's, it's embarrassing. He makes us all look like like chumps man just coming in on the crisp pixels looking looking suave looking groomed you said you just came from work man what is this lying bull crap Yo, we're, we're all like sweaty and bearded and this guy is, uh, <laughs> just came out of a k-pop video i know man yeah. and he was looking no, good no, no, no. You guys don't look good. Nah, he was looking good all weekend long too. So shout out to Eddie Moon, man. Uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you for uh, you know racing home from work. You know, getting through the traffic and everything. Uh, I I'm glad to see you, dude. You did a great job this weekend at uh, Danger Room. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude. But but before we get too far into Danger Room and everything, uh, I'd like for you to just kind of talk to the stream for a second. Uh, let them know uh, who you are, where you're from where you got started in fighting games, you know, how you got to Marvel 3. If you want to try and tackle your name and how it keeps changing, sure, go for it. But j just talk to us for a second. All right, cool. Um, let me let me know if um, you guys can hear me all right. You sound great, dude. You sound great. Thanks. Um, oh, man, how, how did I got into fighting games? Yeah, dude. Man, it's like 16, 17-year-old little Asian guy. All right. <laughs> um, uh, I was just walking through the arcade and I saw the Marvel 2 cabinet hey. and I was like, oh, these are all like characters that I really thought were cool as a kid. And I was like, they threw them into a fighting game with <laughs> characters like Ryu and Chun-Li and Guile? Who are these people? Who are these? <laughs> who, Magneto? Who do, you, who do you think you are? <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm playing that, playing those games. And now, you know, just a Marvel player from Atlanta trying to represent the scene. Trying to improve the South, get 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 rid of the mean that we are. I respect that. Okay, and you are uh, kind of a pillar of the South now. Uh, you I, I you beat me Evo 2012. You put me in losers bracket, and uh, that's when we became friends. And uh, you've been around for a, a long time. What was your first fighting game major? First fighting game major has to be has to be final round. Um, Jeez, what year? What was that like final round negative one? <laughs> Maybe negative three or something, man. <laughs> uh, no, I, I believe it was the final round the year right before Street Fighter Four dropped. Okay, I think it so, was the year right before that. Okay, two thousand eight, two thousand eight, somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've been in this for a minute. You're a champion of the Southeast. Uh, you're currently number two. You're number two, man. Yeah, let me put these fingers up. You're number two in the Curly Circuit points. You're oh, ahead of wait, the world wait, champ. Wait, 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 wait. They, they gave Chris some of his points. I, I think I'm third. Oh, you know? no. <laughs> you're telling me you're number three? You're telling me you're number three in the Curly Sandings right behind the champ and Ryan LV? Shit, dude. What an embarrassment. You're number three. <laughs> That's incredible. You, you have been, when we announced the circuit, you were definitely one of the kind of archetypes of players that we had in mind that we wanted just to cater to you know you, you go all over the the region that you're dominant in you're you're in north carolina you're in you know ohio you're coming to combo breaker you're in florida georgia you know you're everywhere man tell us a little bit about that mindset that you have as a player that that kind of grind and drive 
tell us a little bit about that. How that makes you stronger and, and getting to know these local scenes. And why? Why did you start doing this, Eddie? Yeah, Eddie, why, <laughs> why did, did you this, start man? taking Marvel 3 seriously in year six? <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I was uh, shout out to my sponsor on esports. To be honest, they they gave me a huge opportunity to be able to get out to so many different events that I wouldn't have been able to consider. Um, what was my mindset going into the curly circuit and everything? And when you guys announced it, I mean, I you know, right when you guys announced it, I looked over the the wall of text you guys had, which was great. Don't get me wrong, just all the instructions, you know, sure. all all the logistics, and I looked at it and I figured I was like, wow, like. I see where this is going. We, we've had so many years to showcase the very best players, like, okay, who won this tournament? Who won this tournament? But I really saw the direction you guys wanted to head in, giving um, some strength to locals, and it really motivated me to try to get back to traveling a little bit, because I did that a little bit in the beginning of Marvel 3, all the way back in Vanilla. I was going to New York, I stayed at Combo Team's house for a little yeah, bit, shout out to you, it. Peter. But I mean, in the middle, it just didn't really feel like that. But now I feel like we need to give this game a good send off and get good momentum going into Infinite. Yeah, and also, you know, building your local scene going into Infinite. Like, you want these, these training grounds are going to be important to you guys. Like, you can't just go to these majors where there's going to be hundreds of entrants. When Marvel 3, I mean, Eddie, you remember Final Round 2012 when Marvel 3 was like at its super hype. I think the bracket for Final Round was like 420. It was like, it was, it was crazy. And Infinite's gonna blow that, you know, way out of the water. So I mean, I, I'm 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 glad that you you took so you know took so easily to this. And by the way, you reached out to me. You're you were very you know mindful of rules and you know how to set things up properly. You definitely did your due diligence. You wanted to make sure that you know things were running you know not only well but correctly. You know, so you helped out your other scenes. You know, you're paying people's entry just so they can come and play. I mean, that's that's important. I've done that before. I've fronted people's entry. You know, that's 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 a hard thing to do. Uh, shout out to you, man. Is there anything that you want to say back to your local scene now that you've kind of you've harnessed this ability? Oh, I don't have you on voice anymore, man. Where do we lose you at? Sorry, am, am I am I gone here? Yeah, you're good. No, you're back. You're back. Yeah, hit us. Hit okay, us. okay. Yeah, no. I mean, like beyond just like. Um... Because even then, the biggest motivation wasn't that I was able to just be like, hey, man, like, would you like to enter the bracket? Like, I told people, I, I don't play Street Fighter V at all. That game <laughs> just does not sit well with me. But that I've been is. entering these Street Fighter V brackets just to be like, look, guys, like, I'll, I'll give your game some support. Please give my game that survived from hey. the brink of death. Yeah. So to my community, to anybody out there watching, to anybody that knows my community, Hey, yeah, see, that's the way to do it. I, give and take. I thank you guys. Thank, I thank you guys so much. I, I'm one of the lucky ones. Gwinnett Brawl consistently got a little over 20 people every month, you know. But because of you guys with Curly Circuit, because of my local community willing to support everything here, we bumped it up to over 30 people the last time. Um, nice. I feel like it's just revived my scene, you know? like. They, <laughs> see, that's, that, that's so oh. refreshing, man. That's really cool. Marcus, you got something to say, brother? Yeah, I was going to say, too, I, I, I kind of said this to the C yesterday, our last show at the end after, you know, everything shut down. But I also, like, I don't want to say it's just Gwinnett bro. Like, um, I'm a little bit more familiar with the Georgia scene than you guys are. But uh, to see kind of left like a big void when he moved to California and there was really nobody in the scene that really stepped up in his place as like the community leader and like the person that pulled people aside and helped them out and everything and <clears throat> I think I want to say Darius tried to do that for a while but it's not necessarily his that's not his lane that's not what he's about and I feel like it may have taken a while but I think Eddie did step up into that role especially with the curly circuit thing being so big and I, I think it's even great now that Tasif is back yeah. Uh, that the two of them both, they have different roles that they can play and they can be pillars in their community versus being like, you know, having one person be the, the, the main leader and everything. So I, I, I expect one for Infinite, I expect their scene to be ridiculously strong in the early goings because they have two really good community leaders, two really good pillars to lean on uh, that approach the game differently. But I also like props to Eddie for like stepping up and, you know, kind of filling in that role when he realized, like, hey, like, our scene, this is, like, we want this game to live. Like, somebody has to do it. Let me it was be on life support. Person. 
it was exactly, a exactly. And like you, you did step up and take that role. And I know you won't give yourself any props for that, but I will give you props for that because that's what I saw. And I, I know the curly yeah. circuit definitely helped out afterwards. But like you stepping up and taking on that role, that responsibility has been huge for your scene. And I'm glad that we kind of were able to reward that with the curly circuit stuff and help your the game even more and your scene uh, continue to grow. Yeah, man. Like, uh, go ahead, like, go ahead, Jonas. Go ahead, man. If there's anyone that saw the curly circuit and understood it, like, straight off the point and, and like, really used it to his advantage, it was Eddie. Like, Eddie and Tong, they both took a, a, a scene that was, like, left behind and they just elevated it so much. So I got to give you props to Eddie. Like, you really revived the Georgia scene and you guys are sick. You guys all suck, but you guys are sick. Like, <laughs> you guys are the nicest people ever, and I'm glad that you guys are playing again. And I just want to yeah, give dude. I, want to give <laughs> I was just gonna to say, God, let me just let me give it to him because we're talking about him and he's in the chat, dude. Shout out to Darius. Shout out to Dapvid, dude. I see you in the chat. He uh, sucks. I know. Shout out to he, he sucks because he's a Street Fighter fighter. Yo, that, that, now, bit, but... that bit sucks. Yeah. 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 He, he wishes Fire, he was good at Street Fighter. He wishes. Come he was see good me, nerd. <laughs> But I love you, man. And uh, shout out to Majin Obama. That name is sick. I don't know. Oh, yeah. The other thing I want to say too was that, um, <laughs> like, just even going back to going back to Georgia now, like, like the final round, that pre-final round tournament, like it, like the way your guys have seen, like, gathered around you guys, it really felt like early Marvel, like Marvel three, like the way the crowd yeah, got yeah. behind you guys, and even like, um, you guys had the exhibition with the Florida guys, and that was like a good showcase of two scenes that really like use the curly circuit to their benefit and like are kind of you know pumping up these players and i think that's going to be a good look going into infinite so props to you guys you guys as well as the tampa scene really utilizing the curly circuit for the uh for the for the good of your scenes yeah there's a lot of uh there was i mean i mean i don't want to say a lot but there was a fair amount of criticism and still there still is uh about the curly circuit specifically how it's designed it, it, you know, a little bit more front-ended towards regional and local events. Um, you know, it's not to say that majors are left out. Absolutely not. I mean, we, we talked about it here. We have Combo Breaker. It's going to be an S-tier event, um, and it's going to dish out a ton of points. But uh, definitely, we wanted this reaction. I mean, we wanted to see local scenes revive, and it's not just been you guys in Georgia. We've heard it from all over the country, and um, I'm really glad that, specifically for you, Eddie, this is giving you a platform to elevate yourself Elevate, you know, what you're capable of, and what you're, and what, and kind of quantify your accomplishments. Quantify what it means to put a scene on your back and step up as a role uh, model. And and same thing in Tampa with Tong and Ronan and you know Phil and those guys. I, I honestly can't give you guys enough love. Uh, but we didn't bring you here to talk about Curly Circuit. We brought you here to talk about something a little bit more dangerous, right? We brought you here to talk about Danger Room. And uh, oh, you, that was, it was amazing. You were the first player's choice. You were the first, uh, you know, player's choice, people's choice, whatever you want to call it. You were the first guy voted in uh, to the danger room, and we got some guys on the call who were really close, and you know, who who cut it. You did just just barely, just, just barely, Salt. just barely, oh, you know, man. just barely didn't make it. How are you gonna say that? So, so, but here's why I gotta say that. Eddie, can you can you tell me a little bit about what it felt like when you got your nomination, when you when you solidified yourself into the danger room? How did you feel, man? What was the response? Relief, the <laughs> relief ever. Okay, I I told uh, my friends and stuff too from the start. I was like, I don't know if we're gonna be able to survive multiple rounds of this. I'm, I'm gonna need to dish out everything I've got right away, and if it's not enough, then it's not enough. But I was very relieved that I was able to get in right off the bat because that was it. That was all I had. <laughs> yeah, some guys, some some folks really picked up on that. Like, like you, you, that was a, I mean, fantastic strategy. I mean, the danger room was about a lot of things. There was no one way to get in, but uh, you put all your chips up front, and it ended up being comparatively. A pretty small stack of chips. I mean, once the thing was over, no, I mean, no offense to you or the ATL and everybody who supported you, but damn, dude, the the votes ended up getting what two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. So uh, you really, you really snuck in there, and then you had a great performance um, at, at Danger Room, and and you you know you performed well. You had a great time. I want to start with just your general impression of the event. 
Uh, what, what did you like most? Is there anything that you thought could be better next year? Anything you want to say to the people, to your supporters? Anything about just your experience with Danger Room? Well, man, first, I guess um, I want to give a huge, huge, huge shout out to AZ Angelic. Okay, he he put that yes, event together. He the whole weekend, that man was just hardworking throughout the whole time period, just making sure we were all good, fed, um, taken care of, all of it. Yeah, I mean, and at the same time, he was he was competing in the Danger Room. <laughs> all simultaneously, he was competing in the Danger Room. Um, my overall impression of the event at that, um, that's the first kind of event for me that I've ever been to for something like that. I had never been to anything like that. Um, it, it was simply nothing short of amazing. Like it, it was such a good learning experience for me, even beyond Marvel, you know, just yeah. to learn about the scene. Um, things I really, really liked. Um, I really liked the setup of everything. Um, at first, it seemed like it was like, oh, we got to play round robin and then a singles tournament. But oh boy, the <laughs> hype, the yeah. hype, uh, the lead up, the build up to all of that. Towards you versus the Joey, tournament. man. You versus Joey was uh, incredible. Shout out to Airborne again, who posted a great breakdown of that on Twitter. But yeah, you brought the hype, man. Go on. Sorry to interrupt you. No, not at all, not at all. Yeah, uh, that was a great set. Um, yeah, in hindsight, I uh, don't get me wrong, I wasn't skeptical at all. I just didn't know what to think of it. But yeah, after experiencing it, the round robins were great. I thought they were a great way for us to give back to the community too, give them some quality marble that doesn't just include, you know, like Chris G, Ryan LV, Grand Finals or something. Um, man, stuff <laughs> um, stuff we that could have been worked on. Um, man, I don't know, maybe... It, it felt like we had a lot of downtime in between matches. Sure. Um, I know that was only to make sure that we had ample time for all the sets, but maybe after with some experience, you know, now that Angelic's got it under his belt, ha having this event under his belt, maybe um, we could, we're, maybe we might be able to squeeze in one or two other things if we manage the time a little bit better. And that's not to say that I felt time was managed poorly. But I definitely felt some downtime in between every single event and transition. Yeah, I, I think that is the number one kind of takeaway uh, from from the danger room that I've kind of picked up on is that for for spectators, there was some de there was a lot of downtime between sets. You're right, there was a purpose for that, but you know you better believe Ar Armando is going to uh, fine tune that you know as he goes forward and kind of see how long things took because if there was a blow up. I mean, sometimes it was like 20 minutes, you know, of like downtime because the, the blow up was a blow up. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely think that we'll 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 re re kind of configure that going forward. But I like the round round for, round robin format. Again, I agree with you there. I thought that was really good. It was a good showcase of all the players. It was a good. I, I agree. A good way to give back to the community. You know, give long, meaningful sets. You know, where you could see people make adjustments. It just wasn't the first of three. Uh, real quickly, I want to read the results here of the round robin phase. So this is the, the, the first two days of play. First place, Joey D, 6-1. He tied 6-1 with Duel Kevin because uh, he had the and he got the tiebreaker because he had the better percentage. Now, that could have gone another way. There is There are other ways to decide tiebreakers in round robin formats. Sometimes it's who wins the head-to-head. -head. If that had been the case... Dual Kevin beat Joey D. So Dual Kevin actually would have been the first seed if that had been the decision that they'd made with the format. They ended up going with percentage of rounds. They wanted, you know, the wins within the final, in the uh, the round robins themselves. They wanted those to really matter, you know, the wins and losses. So I understand that. That makes total sense. But um, uh, second place was Dual Kevin. Third place was Ray Ray. And then fourth place was yourself. So you split the pack right at four. Uh, four and three record. This is pretty good. That's pretty damn good considering he was there. Uh, fifth place was Chris G, who did a little bit of sandbagging in the uh, round a robin. A little bit's an understatement. A little bit, especially against uh, uh, you, Mr. Eddie. Uh, let me ask you just while we're stopping on it real quick. Uh, how did you feel when Chris showed up with his Ryu Wesker? <laughs> were you happy? Were you like, this is free. I'm taking it. I'm going. I'm scooping off the table. It's mine. Or did you, or did you really want to see you know the god? I... As the competitor to me, I guess that was cool. Whatever. It was a little bit easier of a win. You know, I'd rather fight Wesker and Ryu than Morgan and Missiles. Right. <laughs> but, but, not to put Chris on blast for a second, but 
Man, I I I don't know. I didn't like the I didn't like the pick, and it had nothing. It absolutely has nothing to do with our set. No, I just felt like it was such a big community event. Um, this was our way to give back to the community for choosing us. I mean, you know, I, I get it that Chris was an auto pick, but you know, this was an event for the community. At the end of the day, it's not an event for Chris. So it, I get it. He won, so that's what I'm saying. It's it's not about the results, but. You know, like when I ever, I played every set to the best of my ability, and if that got me downloaded, then that was cool. But I, but I knew that the community got me there. I wanted to give it everything I had, and I didn't want to just kind of half-ass it to kind of like try to mess with the seating. And you know, again, that's not to put Chris on blast or anything, but I mean, I know that that's not something I would try to do. I would really try to give the community my all. I would try to give the community my undivided attention in an event like that. I feel that. I mean, and I do feel that. And you're right. We we can't hate on Chris for it. There's no one way to do the danger room. There's no one way to win the danger room. There's no one way to participate. But uh, man, I, I I feel you on that. I mean, and and I think that, and I don't think that takes away anything from Chris. I don't think that takes away from anybody. But I think it, you know, to you especially, man, it says a lot about who you are as a player and and kind of how you understand why these things are happening and why it's important to give back in 2017. Why it's important to show appreciation, you know, for everything that we've had, uh, and and I think that's what, in part of you know, in a, not just your anime hair, your your great cheekbones and etc. I think that's what makes you really, you know, kind of likable. Is you you always go out there, you give it the best, and you're such a sweetheart afterwards as well. It's it's hard to not just absolutely love Eddie Moo, and your response was fantastic. I was watching the chat, I was watching Twitter, you know, I was watching everybody who was involved. Everybody loved you, man. It was, it was. I think it was. I hope you came away with that same impression. I think it was a big win for you. I think people really liked you, and um, and uh, that that spoke for itself. Real quick before I go back to you, I just want to finish the uh, the top eight standings here. Sixth place was Angelic. Seventh place, Static Alpha, who got the breadstick, as Yipe says. He got the one win, and then bringing in the rear was uh, T A Wolf. With the uh, the zero and seven, so, I mean it's, it's probably gonna happen to somebody. So uh, I'm, it's someone had to take the goose egg. But uh, uh, shout out to everybody who competed in the round robins, and uh, then the bracket results. The bracket results look, for the most part, yeah, pretty similar. Uh, Chris G took the tournament. Chris G won every tournament. Chris G won Bomberman. Chris G won. Technically, he split the winnings with Mario Maker. Uh, he won single tournament. He won the round robin. Well, he didn't win the round robins. Uh, he won uh, the team tournament. Uh, did he win anything else? Well, hold on. Chris G won Bomberman without killing a single person. Yeah, I, <laughs> I know, right? Everybody kind of fitting. Kind of fitting, isn't it? That's what I said. That's what I said, Steve. I was like, is, is it? Is there anything more fitting of Chris winning a tournament in another game than just by letting every other player hang themselves? Like, it, it, it just makes so much sense. So, uh, shout out to Chris G, who was the performer of the weekend. Second place was Joey D. So, you know, Mr. Number Two, he came up strong. He, I mean, you, you can attest to this, uh, Eddie. We, we were there in the house. People were, like, mind blown by Joey's, like, ability this weekend. He was playing lights out. He was out. on fire. He was on fire this weekend. He was playing, like, you know, just it was Joe, prime Joey D. And he was, he was gloating a little bit about it. But, you know, he's really stressed about the seeds. He wanted to do... The best that he possibly could. Uh, third place was Dual Kevin, who I want to say if there's anybody who was playing up to the speed of Joey D, or maybe even better, probably better, it was Dual Kevin. Uh, that dude played absolutely insane. And then fourth place was yourself. Uh, not enough damage. Eddie Moo, whatever you want to call yourself. I just like Eddie Moo. Moo Moo, you know, it works so well. We Moo, whatever, whatever form of Moo you want to go with. But I, congratulations on getting fourth. Tied for fifth place was Angelic. And Static Alpha, Static Alpha ended up taking the W over Ray Ray, which was our seventh place finishers, Ray Ray and Wolf. Uh, I'm going to give you a rest here for a second, Eddie, so you can think about some of these answers as we kick these. I'm, I'm sure you got a feel of the show. You know you know that this boomerang is going to swing around and hit you in the face eventually. But I want to start with you, Steve. Um, I didn't get to watch finals, actually. I was there the whole weekend. I had to get on a plane and fly back while the finals was going on. I was stressed the hell out about it. But I want to ask you, Steve, and I'm going to kick this around the table as well. Is there any one player that stood out to you this weekend? It could be Eddie. You don't have to be shy since he's on the call and since he's, you know, he's your hometown hero. Is there anybody that stood out to you this weekend that said, damn, that dude is really picking it up. I want to see him do the damage this week or this year. 
Dual freaking Kevin. Say it again. Dual freaking Kevin. That's my man. That kid played out of his goddamn mind. That was the most optimal and sm like. Oh man, like I, I think the only the summation of all of it had to go with his set in singles against Chris. Like Chris even said that, you know, everybody was free, and then he had to pause. Like, wait, no, Dual Kevin definitely wasn't free because he's actually a smart player. <laughs> and like after he was popping off, you'd never expect someone as like you know as egotistical as Chris to give anybody props when he's popping off. But he was Dual Kevin was so close to like bringing it all together. He like. I think the game plan he had where he was basically fighting keep away neutral 2v1 with Deadpool and Hawkeye with like the smart crossover counter like he was so prepared like in every matchup pretty much and you know this was also when uh on the first day I believe when in the first of fives where Joey D just destroyed Chris which was like a big shock and yeah, granted that was crazy. I think like I think Chris was pretty tired. I think Eddie was talking to me on chat saying that, like, you know, he just woke up. And, you know, that was, like, the last thing Chris probably wanted to deal with was Joey D, you know, putting his nuts in Chris G, literally, and figuratively, yeah. all, every which way. But then afterwards, the only person who could really, like, touch Joey was uh, Dual Kevin. He, you know, he chilled him the hell out with, a you know, a strong, for like, five threes in the set. Like... I don't know. Like, I, I hope that Dual Kevin consistently plays like that. I feel like we haven't seen that from him in a while. And it was, like, really refreshing for me to just see him just, like, stick to this crazy neutral TAC every time into Don Fig Tante Infinite. Never drop it. Like, and he even hit the side one, too. He yes, hit a mid-screen. Mid like, mm -hmm. yeah, man. Like, he, he really brought it. And, 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 and I'll be honest too because you know you know I was like probably the first person to really start doing Dante Infinites but I don't do those anymore because the timing's actually different on PS4 and I don't feel like dropping that at all I'd rather just reset you to death that's just me so to see someone just like you know I, it took me so much practice for me to be able to do it on Xbox 360 consistently for me to see him just be like PS4, Xbox 360, Wii U, I don't give a crap. This execution stuff is easy. I got this. He's like, on the Brooks converter, so no bitching. Yeah. He's adding like every yeah, he he's just he, he he played with the spirit of someone who's just trying to fight no matter what. Like he impressed me so goddamn much, especially in his set with dual uh with Chris G. I'd really love to see a run back if he's able to get into pools of combo breaker. Because that, to me, like, I think that he, out of everybody else, is probably onto something of a consistent game plan to actually beat Chris. No one else is. I agree, dude. And let's think about this. Uh, Shout-out to Damon, by the way. Love you, man. You're always in the chat. You're, you're, you're the best, Damon. Shout-out to CPT Damon. But, uh, yeah, I, I, he was he was one timeout grab away from going 7-0. He was yeah. one timeout grab against Ray Ray. I mean, we're talking, like, comes down to the last little possible last little bit. And he was that far away from being the number one seed, seven and zero, and that might have shook things up. You know, that might have shook up the, the the results a little bit. So, man, I'm just saying, Dual Kevin's extra fresh. But uh, is, is anybody else answer in here, Dual Kevin? By the way, Marcus. Okay. Yeah, my answer would be Kevin as well. Go ahead, <laughs> go, go ahead, Marcus. Is there anything else you can gush about this young man and his his presence that he brings to these tournaments, man? Like, 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 to see said, like, he was just like, it was very apparent that he had practiced and he had just super grinded out before the event. And, like, I'm, I don't really have anything to add about how he played this weekend. I'm just super looking forward to watching him at Evo. Yeah. And I just, I'm, I'm, like, super ready to see him at Evo because, like, there are a couple matchups that I want to watch him play. Like, I want to watch him play against Ryan. And I, I hope they meet. And a bit before Evo, because I do want him to match up down and um, as well. Uh, but other than that, like that that kid is just ridiculous. I have nothing bad to say about Kevin. Hey man, dude, uh, shout out to Scape TV, dude. I see you in the chat, bro. It's good to see you. By the way, if you if you're watching on YouTube, there's hundreds of you guys who watch on YouTube. Tune in live with us. I, we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to answer your questions live in the chat. First and third Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Come see us on Team Spooky. We love to interact. We love having you. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't love you on YouTube as well. You know I love the hell out of you. But don't be afraid to come out. Come hang out. It's a good time. Um, Dual Kevin, man, th what, what can you say about him? Jonas, are you also going to – are you going to – are you going to gush, bro? 
Is it? Yeah. Are we running the tables? Listen, listen. Well, Kevin is sick, but everyone knows that, right? But can we talk? And I hate this hurts my this hurts me inside. But Joey B totally played. Amazing. That was my Joey answer. Yeah, played ahead, say amazing. It. Just say, Joey. give him the props he deserves, my friend. Yeah, he did too. If it was, it was one or the other. Joey D. Joey D. He played amazing. Um, that was the best I've ever seen him play. Uh, I think he dominated everyone except Chris. I think Chris is the only one that really like can really like cage the animal, you yeah, know? Yeah. Because I feel like I feel like Joey D is what everyone hates about Marvel, right? He just yes. goes he just goes and he does the most sick, grimy, like why would you ever do that? But of course it's gonna work, you know, and he <laughs> well, he will just go aggro on you until you die. He would just he he he's playing Uno and he has unlimited skip turns. He always, always is on the offensive. And the only <laughs> person one. yeah, and the only person that can actually like stop that is the only person in the danger room that could actually like like kill the neutral game for him, which was Mori Doom, which was Chris G. So props to Joey D, like really. Man, but please, man. if I see you Oh man! <laughs> oh man! Oh my Damn. God! He was talking mad smack about Marvel Live crew all weekend long. I'm just gonna let you all know. Oh my God! He, he was letting us all know how free he thinks that we are and how he should be oh, on the show. Man. And man, Joey, you're so ugly, dude. You're so. Can you ask ugly, him about playing around? What's that? Can you ask him about the time we played? Yeah, I asked him a couple questions. I asked him about a couple L's. Don't forget, my two week zero three owed his ass. At Naptown Clutch, my two week zero with the three zero on him at Naptown Clutch. See, this is why it was, it was super fun to watch Danger Room and hear like you know I was watching it on and off this weekend, and my mom came over and some of the comments she said and some of the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. not gonna talk about the comments. That yeah, I'm not gonna say that. Yeah, that is for the, when the, Joey D's the on Marvel Live. He, that he is for the him. Marvel Live Facebook chat only, okay? That is <laughs> contained. That the Pandora's box must not be opened. Shout, shout out to Remy Martin, man. I see you in the chat. You're, you're, I'm sure you're looking pretty as always. But yeah, Joey D has a face for radio. That's for sure. So uh, he can, he can, oh he can hang out. You know, in the brackets, he can hang out and all that stuff for sure. But uh, yeah, he can keep it where it is. But. I'm, I'm swinging this boomerang full circle now. It's going all the way around the table. It's about to smack your pretty little face. Eddie Moo, right between the eyes. Is there anybody that we haven't already gushed on? Or if you just want to continue to pour it on, is there anybody that impressed you? It doesn't have to be gameplay. Maybe they, you know, this was about personality building. This was about, you know, getting in touch with your fan base. This was about a lot of things. You can even give bumps to Kevin Haw if you want. I don't care. Is there anybody in this danger room that you thought really brought it and just owned up to the opportunity? Uh, I was just going to say uh, they may not have had the best records, but I definitely felt uh, Wolf and Brandon brought it on the mic. Yeah, they did. Free. 100%. Brandon was sick on the mic. I think that was like him and Yipes need to be a pair. Yeah. Because they like, Static was like the only one to me that really like resonated with Yipes' kind of hype, but in like a different way. And he kind of got the energy too. So when they were both on it, it was just hilariously just hype nonstop. You're right. You're right. Uh, shout out to Extra Minerals. I see you in the chat. You just got engaged, dog. That's sick. Shout out to you, my friend. Yeah, that's uh, that's exactly the sentiment I was gonna bring up too, because I was gonna ask if you meant specifically the players. No, anybody uh, you want, man. Anybody you know, this, that you like. Is, uh, you know, like 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 uh, Jonas mentioned, like Dual Kevin always impresses me. So I don't know if he necessarily surprised me this weekend. You know, I expected him to do amazing. Um, Joey D really, 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 just to bring it on, he really surprised me with his play. Like, I, I knew he was always good, but he really came out and showed that. Um, besides that, like you were saying, man, I'm, Wolf was great on the mic. Wolf, Wolf was great for the camera. Um, shout yeah, out they to loved him. Kevin. The chat loved him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I was so glad I got to meet Angelic. You know, I had never really even had a conversation with that guy before this weekend. <laughs> And that guy's just an awesome dude, and I and I could never really get a read on him. I was like, is this guy mean? Is he nice? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really glad I got to meet everybody over the weekend. Like that was the biggest thing for me, was like beyond the game. I was in, I was very impressed by just 
everybody as a person. No, you're right. And, and I've got to give some shout-outs to Kevin Ha, man. Dude, you're the man. Uh, I, I keep posting that on all of his Facebook and Twitter and everything feeds. I don't know if he thinks I'm trolling him or something, but, dude, you're the man. Kevin Ha is funny. He's he's charming. He's he's handsome. He's skinny. He's got he's this also company in arm wrestling. He is yeah. free at arm wrestling. <laughs> that's Ooh. true. That's true. He did. Li- I heard that he lost the stream being arm wrestling. But uh... okay, no, no, no. It, it, okay, I, I'm 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 hopping off here. He 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 tied with me. It was a literal time out t- draw game. <laughs> this is like two wet noodles slapping against each other. I mean, like. <laughs> What do you expect? It's not gonna be a challenge of you know brawn here. I mean, no offense, boys, but uh, shout out to Kevin Hall, man. He he said he had so much fun. He's such a good sport all the time. Like people were ripping on him, you know, because he had to hold down the job so hard. But he did a good job. Shout out to Steve. Uh, you know, Steve was the other staff guy there, and uh, Pink Lemonade. Uh, both of those guys did a fantastic job. Pink Lemonade. Got maybe the worst picture of me ever on commentary with Yipes is like I literally look like Jim Ross from like WWF. Like my face is like half like hanging off. So like I don't know what that's about, but shout out to you for working hard, getting pictures. He's the one who put together the player intros on Sunday. So if you like that, please be sure to uh let Mr. Pink Lemonade know that you liked it. And uh shout out to Kugi, Paul Kugler, uh Broken Tears Kugi, who cooked for us on Friday. Best curry I've had in my life. Ooh, that Japanese curry, dude. That Japanese curry kept us all on the itis heavy. He made um, barbecue chicken and uh, street corn. So uh, yeah, man, he was like, uh, you know, he was he was like the the, the dad, the house dad for the night. So uh, shouts to him, man, and uh, every, all the AZ guys and the LV guys who, who dropped through. I Heart Justice. That dude like radiates like fun and love. And uh, not soy, uh, Mr. Three Thousand, the guy who put Three Thousand in his own pot. I was glad that we were able to give him a stick. You know, he kind of fell on hard times. His car got broken into. You know, his stuff got stolen. I think his car got stolen. It was like it was a real bad situation for him. So I was glad to see him and to see him still in good spirits. I mean, the energy, Eddie. I mean, you were there. The energy in the house just all weekend long was just it was nonstop, tremendous. Like celebration right that's kind of what we were doing we were celebrating the game yeah that's definitely the kind of sentiment i felt too like it was it was competitive of course everyone wanted to win but just felt like such a good celebration of the game that we've been loving for however many years yeah and i I didn't get to play but i was thankful to be there as staff i got to commentate a little bit you know sharing sharing sets with yipes on this on the headset is always a great time but I didn't try to be, you know, Brandon killed it. I didn't try to be the hype dude. I didn't want to do that. Like, there's nothing worse than when, like, some white dude jumps on and is like, so look at me do my favorite yipes, you know? Man, I didn't do that. Brandon definitely stole the show. He was he was so good on commentary. There was an AMA question that specifically asked him, like, do you have any plans to branch out, you know, just from playing? Do you want to, you know, maybe do more commentary and stuff like that? That That's that's exactly what I don't see. The Danger Room was great sets. Um, you know, people really coming out of their shells, developing their personalities in a lot of different ways, like a lot of fun, a lot of love, and a lot of sharing, you know, that, that that's really what the Danger Room is about. Uh, we're, we're almost at time here, but we got a few minutes. Is there any closing remarks that, uh, Eddie, you want to give about Danger Room, your experience, before I kind of kick it around the table here? Or any closing remarks about Eddie Moo in general? You're number three on the points, man. You're kind of godlike right now. Oh, I don't hear you on the voice again. I lost you on the voice again. Hello? Oh, you're back, Hello? you're back. Yeah, tell, tell us about um, it, man. Let us know. Sign yeah, I mean, closing remarks for Danger Room, um, you know, I barely have any criticism. You know, I was talking about the timing of stuff. That's really not even criticism. Just maybe, like, one little thing we can improve on. All in all, it was a great event. I know Angelic's got plans cooking up for the next Danger Room, and, you know, it's going to be great with the new game, Marvel Infinite and everything. Um, I, I, I'm, I was just honored that I was given that opportunity. I was just... I was beyond honored. Um, I, just thank you to the community. I can't even thank you guys enough. <laughs> uh, closing remark on me. Um, don't run up on me. What you mean? What, <laughs> what you mean? mean? What, what you mean? mean? That's one of the memes of the weekend, man. What you mean? Shout out to Eddie Moo, man. I was like crazy the whole time. I was like on my left, you know, it's like Eddie Moo. I've known this dude since 2012. On my right, is Static Alpha. This is my training partner, my OG, like homie in the scene. You know, these guys, like, Wolf. I met that dude when he was, like, 14, guys. Like, I've known what? Wolf for, like, so long now, it feels like. And, like, it's just to see. And Joey D, like, you're so ugly, dude. You're so ugly. 
but I was glad that you got to go and show your stuff. You're one of Midwest's finest. Like, I just, I, can't, I have nothing, you know, but good things to say about the experience. Jonas, is there anything you want to touch on? Uh, closing remarks on Danger Room, man. Any, any positive feelings you want to give as, you know, someone who is, dude, I know you're not giving yourself enough credit, but what you did was fucking amazing, dude. You, you, you were one of the warriors of the Danger Room voting experience for sure. Any closing remarks for Danger Room? Like, how did you get the backing of Justin Wong, the god? Dog, like, that's real. That's real recognized that's real. That's all that is. That's just real recognized and real. Tell me about it, Jonas. I'll be on the next one. Yay! Hopefully, Yay! <laughs> hopefully I'm not going to even need to get voted in. That is my goal. That's my go. dude. Um, That's my dude. It was, as a spectator, it was great. Um, I couldn't catch most of Saturday and early Sunday because Mother's Day. But um, from what I could catch and from the singles tournament, it was it was amazing. Like, like that is every Marvel player's dream. Just mm -hmm. stay in a house, play nonstop for three days, eating and talking shit. <laughs> that, is, that is my dream. Like, I'm happy you guys liked it. Well, um, I'll, I'll let you know in a little secret. You had one more endorsement uh, this weekend from somebody I was talking to who, who said he was really disappointed that you weren't there and thought that you would have been a blow-up. You would have really blown a lot of people up, and that was Mr. Christopher Gonzalez. He was he was singing your praises in a big way, so uh, I'm sorry you couldn't have been there, dude. But you had you had two gods real, recognized, and real. Because so. I, almost, I almost always beat Chris G, and I just screw it up. I'm not going to... <laughs> but hey, man, just like you said, dog. And that guy one, is so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> he is, man. And you play. I want everyone. I want everyone to catch Canada Cup 2016 Raid versus Chris G. Just watch that set, and you can see the moment when my heart breaks. Just, yeah. just do it. And, and, yeah, man. We've we've all had the Chris jitters, but maybe you jittered a little bit harder than some people have. So shout out to you. Shout out for you being a good sport, holding it down. Next danger room could happen as early as later this year, so uh, definitely don't let the foot off the pedal yet. I saw you, Prophet, talking about it in the chat. Uh, yeah, man, you definitely gotta keep the gas on if you're interested in danger room this year. Uh, Marcus, any closing remarks on danger room uh, or for the evening? True. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I didn't go back to the. I didn't go back to the time. Um, no, it was it was a super fun event to watch. Like I, I got to watch um, summer Friday, summer Saturday, summer Sunday. Uh, the round robin stuff was super cool. My only like complaint, I guess you could say, is that um, sometimes there was, I guess, depending on the set count, again like, they were keeping schedule, but uh, there was a longer downtime in between sets and others. Right, right. Um, right. But I mean, that's not anything. That's not their fault. It was just hey, like. We have this scheduled for this player, so we need to make sure that we fill this time. So, um, so other than that, like you know, just tuning in and like, oh, like there's like 30 minutes of talking, and before the next set. But it was a super fun event to watch. I already said, I think I said in our chat, I was like, next one has to be 16 people because yeah, that singles yeah. event was ridiculous, and like 16, <coughs> 16 people would be stupid. Like, I don't know how they would do, like, a seating beforehand, because I don't think you can do a 16-man round robin. Now, at least not first to fives, but, like, 16-man. Like, I'm already, like, like you guys said, I, I was thinking about the next event and, like, yo, what can they do and how will this be even more hype? So I'm, I'm super excited for the future of these types of events, and uh, hopefully we can get one going super early and, and infinite. Looking forward to it. You better believe that uh, the number that we're all looking at right now, staff, fans, everybody, is 16. We're scheming. Uh, that house was already pretty tight with eight. And that was a big damn house. I mean, Eddie, you can vouch. That was a big damn old house. So Huge. Finding, finding a 16-man venue is possible. We'll, we, we still want to capture the same, you know, house vibe. You know, we still don't want to lose that. So... Uh, we're scheming. Let me just let me tell you that we're definitely trying to find a way to, to bring it to more faces. But uh, uh, what about you, SBK? Any closing remarks for Danger Room? Any shout outs for the evening? Anything you want to let out? Um, hold on. Okay, yeah. You're good. Yeah, what you're is good. happening? No, it's like my. Okay, now we're good. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, my like my headphones were like blowing up out of nowhere for me holding to push the talk. But not Danger Room was super sick. 
um, I mean, me, I was house sitting for Eddie and Eddie's dog, and me and Max or Black Work, we were sitting there just like screaming nonstop, scaring the dog pretty much at like every set that's going on like i was there all of friday watching it saturday i was pretty invested um and sunday uh i mean that was like as marcus said that that singles event was absolutely insane but to be perfectly honest you know i love marvel i support it fully all that stuff but yo mario maker needs to come back that was yo. probably the most fun i've ever had watching you know the marvel community yeah. play a game because oh my god, it was just too funny to see like Ray Ray just like be terrible. I know. And to see <laughs> to see Eddie, you know, you you so Genmu out of nowhere and like actually do work. Like there were so many like Twitch clip moments and like oh man, I, I loved the Mario Maker and like and sh big shout outs to Yipes for just being like He's a creative. Some gold. No, seriously, like that's the kind of like superpower I think he brings. It's just like he'll have this like idea, like off the cuff, out of nowhere. He'll have no idea if it's gonna work or not. He may not even know what he's gonna do going into it, but he'll just freestyle it. I mean, and he's like the god MC, you know, he knows how to freestyle, and he'll just bring such a positive energy to it that's just undeniably just awesome. And Panic uh, Alpha, I, Panic Alpha was too funny. Yo, Panic Alpha, like oh, so many beasts, dude. So many. It hurt me so much that I couldn't go because I know I would have won free. Oh! I would have won Mario Maker free. <laughs> Yo, if you're a Marvel player, you suck at Mario Maker. See me at Evo, I'll money match your Mario Maker. <laughs> wow. And I'm not even kidding. That's for sure. Like I was, I, I have my Wii U over there. Like you guys are so bad. Like why? <laughs> Yeah, Eddie, man. why? But that's what made it so perfect. I, that's what made it so beautiful. I didn't play Mario as a little kid. I was getting what? beat and doing math. <laughs> oh. Dude! <laughs> oh my god. I'm so glad the exhibition events were as fun. Bomberman was fun. Like, that was mad funny. Like, Eddie, dog, what happened? Chris literally had the curse. He could not use no bombs, bro. I I, I was mind fucked. Why did no the bombs? curse last for like four minutes? It's for the whole like round, basically, because you should just go kill him, dog. It's so. That was feeling that way about because I wasn't allowed to compete, so I was not allowed to to be in the exhibitions. I was not allowed to be in any part of it. But Bomberman is my shit, and I definitely would have fucked everybody up in Bomberman had I been allowed to compete. And I didn't even get to stay for Mario Maker. Yipes! Shout out to Yipes. That dude is so real. He was like, bro, you're leaving on Sunday? Nah, we gotta push it up to Saturday. He was like, he was like trying so hard. He was like, we gotta push it up. I don't want you to miss this. Like, you are definitely gonna love Mario Maker so much. And I was like, dude, let's make it happen. But unfortunately, a schedule's a schedule. So, shout out to you, Michael. Shout out to Danger. Shout out to Eddie Moo. Yeah. Shout out to Marvel Live. Shout out to the chat. Shout out to everybody who's here. We ran a little bit over, but you know, it's not as bad as when Sam's running the show, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. You no know, two hour episodes out of here, but, uh, uh, we, we all got bedtimes to get to. We all got things to do. So I want to let everybody give one more shout out if you, if you want to. Eddie, anybody you want to shout out? Any sponsors, any teams, any pretty girls you want to give love to for the evening? Um, um, shout outs to uh, On Esports. Great organization. They've, done, they've been nothing but good to me. Um, gave me so many opportunities I wouldn't have otherwise. Where can, they, where can they follow them at on Twitter? Um, it's, on, it's actually just at On Esports, I believe. Yep, A H N. A by the way, A H N. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, shout outs to Gwinnett Brawl. You know, kind of like a pseudo sponsor, but great event. We we get uh, out of towners too. You guys should come out. Well, more than two hundred people. Um, shout out to Snortney, <laughs> the one who won the stick. Uh, yeah, dude, that was that was good. The the re roll, man. Uh, Joey D won the stick, but he ugly, so he didn't keep it. So. But I mean, you know, besides that, like. Just a big shout out to everybody who showed me support to get me into the danger room. Um, shout out to you guys for having me on the the show. I always watch it and stuff, and I'm just real honored you guys wanted to have me here. I hope I was a good addition. Definitely. Yeah, you you were phenomenal, dude. Thank you for holding it down. Uh, Jonas, any shout outs for the evening that you want to give? Um, shout outs to everyone that is still supporting Marvel in 2017. That's yes. it. Yes, absolutely. You guys are the heroes. You're the reason why Danger Room happens. You're the reason why we have 130 plus at Combo Breaker. Shout out to you guys. Marcus, anything you want to deliver for the night? Shout out to Hot Addicts. Anything? Uh, shout out to just everybody that made Danger Room possible between running it, the voting for it, the players involved, all that. It was a super dope event to watch. And then, like Jonas said, shout out to everybody that still played this game in 2017. 
Amen. Amen. Seif, any shout outs you want to give to the evening, dude? I will echo all the previous shout outs as well as shout outs to the Georgia Illuminati. Eee. Shout outs to Fizzy Cups for the money. Eee. I appreciate that. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. Oh my that, God. We go, what did we not say? It was That's, a body bag. You're Zip right. it up. It's free. That's for you the know? best. That's for the best. I mean, we called it. I'm sorry you had to witness that for yourself. I would not put money up against my, like, don't don't mess with Eddie Moo and Log that, that that's not fair. That was hard, man. Unless it was hard. I I, I know for, I know firsthand what it's like to try and run jam session and like a tattoo assist against this nerd. <laughs> Woo! Stop. Hey. Anyway. Hey. Um. <laughs> but yeah, shouts to shouts to all y'all. Shouts to Eddie Moo for I'm glad that we got a representative from our community to be there and you know represent us and show us you know show everybody like I i'm so happy that you had such a positive experience from it you know like early on before you left you were like all nervous and stuff like that it's like i don't know i'm just gonna make sure i'm just like you know do mad work and whatnot but you came out of it with just such like a positive connection with like everybody that was there like i told you you had mad fun dude yeah, like you seem like you were having mad fun and everybody got to really see just how like awesome funny positive you are as a person and this is just the beginning for you as a player and whatever. So I hope so. I hope so. Definitely, dude. Whatever. But anyway, uh Yeah, uh that's all I really gotta say about that. Hell yeah. That's a that's a long list of love and I agree. D all the above. D all the above. Shout out to everybody's in the chat right now. I see you, Benjamin. I see you, EMP Roach King's thighs. I see you, Soul Murder Burger. Shout out to Phil Tassett for winning the stick. Shout out to Tubaware, you definitely ain't my favorite, but shout outs anyways. Thank you all for continuing to support Marvel Live. You're so consistent. You're here all the time, every show, in full force. Shout out to everybody who watches us on YouTube, man. You guys are, I know I'm giving you crap for not being here live. It's not crap, man. It's, just, it's, it's all love. Thank you so much. We love you. I love you guys so much. We have such a great fan base. You know, you guys interact with us on Twitter. Uh, you come up to us at live events. You let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. You guys are just the best fans in the business, and 2017 is going to keep on rolling. Uh, next episode, let me go ahead and pull this up. Shout out to Aeonian. I see you, dude. Uh, next episode is going to be June 6th. Don't miss it. We'll be there. You will too. Otherwise, you're square. You're done. Anybody else? Anything else? Because I'm tired. Let's Let say good night. Let's say good night. <laughs> good everybody, night. Good night. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, everybody, for Peace joining me tonight. Peace, guys. Peace. Take care. Shouts to Damon. Have a good night, everybody.